Hi, my name is Quaker Rogers, and today we're going to get started working with R and R Studio. This video is part of an entire curriculum in data management and data visualization for social science, and you can find instructions on how to download R and R Studio on the Spec Lab website. You can also Google download R and download R Studio and find your way pretty easily, but do be sure to download both R and R Studio separately. The difference is that R is the computing software and RStudio is the user interface that allows you to write and save R code. Now once you have both R and RStudio installed on your computer, go ahead and open up RStudio. When you open RStudio, you're opening up an R file, also known as an R script, which is a text full of R commands and lots of notation in which we can describe to others and to our future audience what each piece of code does and why we are doing things that particular way. To create a new R script, we can go to our file drop down menu at the top of our screen, select new file, select R scripts, and a brand new R script will appear on our screen. Another way you can create a new R file is to navigate to the top left corner of your screen, select the white box, select R script and another R file will appear just like the previous one. Now, when you wanna save your new R script, you can navigate back to the files tab and then select save as to save your R script and you can give it a descriptive name. Since we are in the spec lab, we wanna make sure that we include the name of our R scripts, our initials and the dates that we have created our R script. And there you have it, you have your brand new R file. Just note that as you're making edits to your R script, you wanna make sure that you save your progress every now and then. R Studio is divided into four different categories to help you keep organized, while you're working on projects in R. On the top right hand corner of our screen is the global environment where R can keep track of any objects that have been created in R. For example, variables, data sets you've loaded, and values such as vectors, which I'll talk about in a future video. Objects in R are used for data storage and come with their own features and capabilities which will be utilized more in later modules. Again, these will all be listed here in the global environment. Below the global environment is the files, plots, packages, help, and viewer tabs. The files tab displays files in the folder where you saved your R script in. And it navigates similarly to Windows Explorer or Finder on Mac where you can open files rename files, delete them, or move them wherever you may please. Next is the plots tab, which allows us to view any plots that you have created in R Studio, and you have the options of zooming into your plot or exporting it into your desirable file format. And the plots tab is essentially useful for examining data visualizations that you will create in the spec lab, which you'll learn about in future data science videos. The packages tab displays all of the different packages installed on your local R studio. Packages contain specific R commands that aren't available in the base R package. The help tab allows you to access R documentation to help you better understand R and R studio and then lastly, we have the viewers tab, which allows you to view certain graphics that are available to you via certain packages. Moving on to the left side is the editor and the console. If we type commands in the console window, we simply type a command, hit enter, and the results will display. For example, in the console, when I input two plus two, 
I get four. However, when we're working with social science work, we want everything we do to be transparent and reproducible. So instead of running commands from the console, we can write our commands for a project in an R script through the editor instead. So in my R script above my console, I can first write myself a note about what I'm going to do. We call these notes comments in R. Comments use the hashtag followed by the text which you want to type and the text will appear in green. In line 12, I've put a comment here telling the audience of what the code on line 13 is trying to accomplish, which is adding two plus two to teach myself math. And then the code here, which is the exact same code from the console is in line 13. Now I highlighted this specific code because if I was to hit run, then R would execute all of the code within my editor, but I only want to work with line 13. And so I highlight the code. And when we run the code, that just means that I'm telling R Studio to execute that line of code and perform that code. And the output of that code will appear here in the console. So when I hit run, I get the same result. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. A shortcut, which is very handy so that you don't have to click on run all the time, is command enter or command return for Mac or control enter if you have a Windows computer. But how do we set up our scripts for a real project? Not 2 plus 2, but some real code where we load in a data set, manipulate it, run some regressions, make some pretty pictures, that sort of thing. Our next video runs through some best practices for setting up a header in your R scripts, loading packages, and setting your working directory.